A while back, I made a pretty scathing review about this computer. As a gaming PC, it really wasn't up to the task, however, like the end of the video suggested, that wasn't its intended use. As I don't like wasting my money, I planned on using it as a media center PC for my TV in my living room, and it worked alright for that. However, it's big, relatively slow, pretty loud, and although it's power efficient compared to a gaming PC, it still uses around 50 to 100 watts under load. I knew there had to be a better way. And lo and behold, there was. The PC Compute Stick. The one that I have here is the Access Plus by Azul. There's a specific reason I like this one in particular over all the other numerous PC Compute Sticks, but we'll get to that in a little bit. First, a little bit more about what's powering this device. The beating heart of this micro PC is an Intel Atom X5Z8300 quad-core with a 1.84 GHz boost clock and a 5 watt TDP. 4 GB of DDR3, 32 GB of built-in storage with an Intel Cherry Trail HD graphics with 12 graphics cores at 500 MHz, all running on a 64-bit version of Windows 10 with absolutely no preloaded crap or bloatware. It's also a fanless design, meaning it's completely silent. The PC stick itself has one HDMI port, one USB 3 and a USB 2, a micro SD slot, and then it has its main feature, the whole reason I like this one above the others. It has a built-in Ethernet port and a dual-band Wi-Fi antenna with Bluetooth. The fact that this has a built-in Ethernet port is what makes this so good for a mini streaming PC. That means no lag when streaming full HD video. More importantly, it means no lag when online gaming. Of course it can stream video, that's a given, but can it game? We're a low-budget gaming channel, so of course we're gonna find out what kind of things that this can play and at what kind of settings. We'll mostly be focusing on games that I tend to play while lazily lounging around my sofa after a long day's work. The setup I used for testing was the Access plugged into my TV with a 1TB external hard drive with all of my games on it and I use my wireless mouse and keyboard that I used previously with my Athlon Media Center PC. The first game we tested was Battle Block Theater at 1080p. This is a great, cooperative, and highly competitive, light-hearted puzzle platformer with villainous cats that I often play with my friends when they come over to visit, and the access handles it flawlessly with a 38fps average. With a 30fps minimum, the frame rate never dipped below the V-Sync on the TV, giving it a near flawless low-end gaming experience. Next, I tested Team Fortress 2 at 720p low settings and I got a very playable 32fps average with a 52fps max and a 16fps minimum only when all sorts of particle effects and explosions were crowding the screen. It's clear, however, that the Cherry Trail graphics are struggling as the CPU never reached over 80% usage in the game. Even so, it's not bad for a fully-fledged Windows PC that costs less than a date night. Feeling a little bit cocky after finding out that this can run 3D games, I decided to run Skyrim. I did manage, after quite a while of fiddling around, to get the game running at a playable frame rate. Again, the CPU did just fine, but the HD graphics struggled to give a 24fps average at 800x600 resolution. But it was playable enough with a 42fps max and only ever dipped down when things had to load in from the external hard drive. It looks almost as good as an Xbox 360 and is quite cinematic at these frame rates, but is still playable in a pinch. Next, I played one of my favorite games to sit around and relax with, of course, Banished. In Banished at 1080p low, we managed to get an average of 28, a max of 58, and a minimum of 14. The frame rate in this game is actually quite good until you decide to time accelerate. When you do that, the frame rate will drop into the teens, however, overall, it's still a good experience on this couch computer. I managed to lose myself in this game while benching and ended up playing it for over two hours before realizing I should probably stop. Another game I got lost in while benching was FTL. FTL is a great roguelike game that runs great on most systems, and this system is no exception. At full settings, this game managed to pull 50 FPS on average, 78 while drifting around space, and it never dropped below 38 even when getting ambushed by space pirates. In Don't Starve 1080p, we again got a good 34 FPS average. That being said, this game is really easy to run. I also tested out Don't Starve together and got very similar results. 
the last modern title I benched was The Binding of Isaac. And in this game, even though I'm awful at it, it was really fun and playable with a 59 FPS average and 64 FPS max. These new games are great and all, but what about old classics? I love old campy base builder type games, so I had to try out Evil Genius on the Access. And on Evil Genius, we got a great 52 FPS average when just building our underground lair, and 98 FPS when perusing our acts of infamy on our world map. The frame rate only ever dipped down below 30 when the forces of justice raided out our hollowed out volcano in order to capture our nefarious and venerable overlord. The last game we tested was another old title I used to love to play, of course it's Serious Sam 2. On Serious Sam's 720p max settings, we got a great frame rate of 63 while slaying the evil hordes of monsters, and got a blistering 167 FPS when they were all slain. Despite this PC's limited gaming capabilities, it actually has a surprisingly large amount of games it can actually play, and play well I might add. However, during gaming the PC did get quite hot, after all it's passively cooled. However, all that being said, it isn't really meant to be a gaming computer. It's meant to be a cheap, on-the-go, mobile-type media center PC used for word processing, email, HD, video streaming, and the occasional PowerPoint. Even so, it still games pretty well and I am quite impressed. I just have to say 100% full disclosure, thank you for Azul for supporting this channel as episodes like this wouldn't be possible without them. Link in the description if this sort of thing would fit your bill, but if not, thank you folks for watching, may your frame rates be high and your prices low, and I'll catch you folks next time.